Here's the surprising reason why cardio isn't the best form of exercise for fat loss. It actually can teach the body to become more efficient, tear muscle down, and make fat loss in the future much more challenging. This is why studies show in head-to-head -head competitions, cardio causes weight loss, but it also causes muscle loss, whereas strength training, pure fat loss. So although cardio burns a lot of calories, pay attention to what it tells your body to do afterwards, how it tells your body to adapt. That's most important. Gonna hammer this home. Uh, hammer. I just feel like we talk... We have to talk about this so much, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, it's it's um, we're compelled to. It's still it's still a thing. It still triggers people when we talk about this. So to be very clear, because I know this will get people cut it, you know, make their little clips. I hate those videos that people make when they're like, it looks like they're watching you, so oh, they can counter you. Yeah. And there's some good, by the way, there's some really good uh, coaches out there that do this and understand context. And, and then there's some idiots out there that'll that'll. In fact, there was one guy that posted something I said, and then proceeded to agree with what I said, but said that he disagreed. But then countered uh, but he did. in his anyway, caption. <laughs> it was weird. It was weird. But anyway, yeah. my point, okay, so first off, uh, all exercise, if applied appropriately, is beneficial. All exercise, if applied appropriately, okay, because you could overdo things, you could do things wrong, right? But done properly will improve your health. Improving your health tends to help uh, with fat loss. So it's not that, you know, I'm saying don't do cardio. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's good for you, especially if you want endurance, great for performance when it comes to endurance. But when it comes to just pure fat loss, uh, it's actually not that effective because in order to get really good at doing cardio um, over the long term, what the body tends to do is it pairs muscle down. It makes you efficient. It makes you an efficient calorie burning machine. It makes you better at cardio. And, and muscles with lots of endurance are not very big. And cardio does burn a lot of calories while you do it. And so your body tries to learn how to burn less calories while you do it. So when you look at studies where they combine cardio plus diet, you see a significant of the weight that the person loses comes from lean tissue. It comes from lean body mass. Strength training, on the other hand, causes pure fat loss, causes less muscle loss. And of course, if you do it right, it can cause muscle gain uh, during that process. So when it comes to pure fat loss, it's a it's not the best form of exercise. Now it's better than nothing. Um, it still can be very healthy for you. But if if your goal is fat loss, um, and you don't really care about tons of endurance, and it's not like you're like in love with cardio, so it's not your passion, and you're just picking forms of exercise for for effectiveness, when it comes to pure fat loss, cardio is not at the top. Definitely isn't. Yeah, I think this becomes really controversial with our peers because it sounds like we're discouraging people from doing cardiovascular training. Right. And I think that's where we always get into these debates with other fitness professionals. Uh, well, I don't understand why the guys are always telling people don't do cardio or this, that it's like, well, context really matters here. Um, I also think there's a, there's a, a, when, when talking to clients, there's another element to this discussion that I, or some of our peers, I don't think fully grasp or understand, or maybe they haven't had enough experience to see this. And something that I know that we all factor in when giving this advice, which is long-term adherence. Mm -hmm. right. And when you've been doing this for a really long time and you start to see patterns in people's behaviors around exercise, you learn to factor that in when giving your advice. And it's not purely, and, and it's not it's always- It's our North Star. That's like half of what we, our, our suggestions, our advice, like we lean on that as like one of our main things that we focus on. And it's really hard for some of these nerdy fitness professionals that are just coming out of school to wrap their brain around it because some of it can seem counter to what- you learned in school in regards to what is best for you uh, in in terms of uh, burning calories or health or reducing body fat. And there's an, that other element to it when you have to factor in the adherence piece and behaviors, it changes the advice many times. And when I'm thinking about, okay, I'm going to advise this person who, granted, is uh, probably been struggling with weight you know, 20, 30 years of their life and they finally have got some momentum and they're doing this thing and they're doing, you know, three, four days of running on a treadmill or that's what they want to do. I'm thinking to myself, like, even if that could get them down a little bit of weight right now, that, that formula, I know how hard that is for them to keep that for the rest of their life. And they'd be far better off 
not committing to all that and only committing to one or two days of strength training and lifting weights because the return on that, not only for them as far as building muscle, but burning body fat metabolically is far greater and more realistic to be sustainable long-term because I'm asking them to only commit to one or two hours in the entire week versus four hours of an hour of cardio, which has very minimal ROI in comparison. Yeah, well, you're hitting another nerve too because the other people that have the biggest challenge with this are the performance-driven coaches and trainers mm -hmm. who've worked a lot with athletes who themselves train at a hardcore high level. And whenever we say something like, two days a week of strength training, don't overdo it. It, the, the, what they hear us say is, we're, or what they, I think, what they interpret is, we're being easy on people. And no, people need to go hard. And well, and what's they, wrong with adding extra cardio? Fine, do the strength training, but then throw uh, more on top of it. The, look, here's the deal: when you're <clears throat> when you're dealing with most people, one of the top considerations when it comes to long term success is stress management. Okay, now when I say stress management, what people hear is stressful job, stressful life, learn how to meditate. Well, that's true, but we're talking about all stresses on the body, which includes those things, plus exercise. Exercise is a stress. So people call in, this happens often, people will call in, we'll get on the on the you know Zoom with them and we'll coach them. And what we hear from them is, and, and what we can deduce is, this person's body's overwhelmed. They're exercising you know, four days a week, uh, they're not getting great sleep, they have kids, they have a job. The way that they're communicating how they're responding and their plateaus, like we know through experience, like their body's overwhelmed with stress. So what we need to do as coaches is some stress management. Now, what I'm not going to do is tell them, quit your job, find a new job, you know, find a new relationship. Like that might help, but that's not my job. My job is exercise. Yeah. So I look at their stress management and I look at the exercise portion. I go, okay, you're working out four days a week. You're doing 45 minutes of cardio plus an hour strength training each time. We need to cut something. Yeah. What is the thing I'm going to cut that's going to produce, that's going to actually get your body moving in the right direction? Or to put it differently, what do I want to keep? And what I keep is strength training. What I cut is the other stuff. Now we get the stress bucket down. We have some stress management. The body responds again. And what we've kept in the routine is the form of exercise that, as you put it, Adam, gives you the biggest bang for your buck, the most return for the time spent doing it. Because at the end of the day, we want sustainability. We want effectiveness and we want sustainability. And that's where that comes from. Yeah, I mean, in the context of the performance coach, it's uh, when you have this perspective um, that you need your clients to have the conditioning. They need the endurance. They need like because it it, it applies within uh, a sport. We have demand of of you know it, it, an X you know, like a very specific amount of time where you have to actually run and endure, uh, you know, for these uh, sporting events or practice or whatever it is, right? And so if you're talking to your average person, how much of that day do they actually have to devote and carve out uh, for that type of demand? They just don't have that. So we have to be more effective and efficient uh, within that window of like, what does their daily life look like? What does that consist of? And a lot of it is like sedentary and like very brief moments uh, for them to even get in the, the type of activity. So you want to maximize that opportunity by strength training, which then sets them up better metabolically, uh, you know, to be able to uh, adapt and, and lose fat uh, down the road in, in, in a sustainable place. It's like, you know, yeah, it'd be great if like we have all the time in the dates and now add all this extra activity and all these uh, other things it's healthy to move uh continuously but like we have to be more effective and efficient with your everyday average person because they just don't have that accessibility do you know why you want to know why also this pisses people off too is because it's a big reflection on themselves that they don't want to admit is them too so there's a bit of a uh, like common thought around that we give this advice to really newbie people that are unmotivated <laughs> that, you know, and so, but that's yeah. not me. No advanced I, people. This works. I love, too. I love fitness and yeah. I'm in, I'm in the middle, I'm in the height of my motivational. Yeah. I'm kicking ass. My abs look great. I'm feeling myself. I get up in the morning, do my hour cardio every day. Plus I train later in the evening phase of my life. And so this advice doesn't apply to me. I'm not that person. And I think everybody should be more like, and the truth is, that person, part of why they struggle with hearing that advice from us is because I am fucking talking to you. I'm talking to you too, because I am a fitness person too. And also recognize that there's these phases in my life when I'm highly motivated and I am getting up in the morning before and walking on the treadmill. And I'm doing crazy. I'm getting ready for a show. And, and then I have other phases of my life where 
fatherhood and sleeping in and business and other things all of a sudden take a priority. And guess what? Sure glad that I have the knowledge and understanding on how to balance that out when my life switch around. And what that looks like is I'm no longer committing to all that cardio. So what am I going to do that's going to give me the best return on the time that I'm going to spend the gym because I'm spending very little right now? Oh, it's lifting weights. So it's a real, it's a, it's a bit of a reflection on people that that's where they get so upset and defensive of, too. That of it's, course, of course. But you're not talking to me. No, but yeah, of course, yeah. like bringing it back down, like if we're trying to improve people's health um, and you're, you're, you're communicating this, you're a doctor, let's say you're a doctor, you're a healthcare practitioner, or you're just, you know, thinking about a family member um, and you want to encourage them to do something that's going to really, it's going to move the needle in terms of health. It's going to improve the mobility. It's going to improve their metabolic health. It's going to help them with their blood sugar uh, or their insulin sensitivity. Um, you're going to pick the thing that's going to be the most effective. And, and look, uh, there's a reason why people who've managed gyms for years, like we did, anybody listening right now who's worked in a gym for years will tell you this. If I say the word cardio bunny, you know exactly what I'm talking about, uh, or cardio fanatic, these are members that would come in and like clockwork, they hit 45 minutes on the treadmill Every and day. they never change. And they look the same. They look the same <laughs> and, and they're all overweight and they look the same and it's they're sweating and by the way it's better than nothing okay it's definitely better than they're definitely healthier doing that than doing nothing but if they took that same energy and time and had devoted it to strength training they took half that or they, a quarter of that time they'd be blown away that's um, the part sal yeah, is yeah. that it's not even like you it's like, like you're trading for a better thing no it's a fraction yeah. of what your energy and effort you're putting towards trying to be healthy and fit and you would be healthier and fitter. That's yeah. the that's the yeah, argument. You know, there's good news mm. though. The good news is is that this trend is our is I mean what we're communicating. Yeah, people are getting it and I'm seeing this in in gyms myself. You know, there's two different gyms I work out in. One is a little bit more, you know, kind of hardcore, the other one's more kind of mainstream, older. And um I see this now in the people working out. Like in the in the in the gym that I go to where you see an older crowd, especially in the morning when I go. I see more people strength training now than, than than doing cardio. It wasn't like that before. And these are everyday, regular people yeah, just working it's out. It's slowly spreading. It's starting to spread and make sense, and it's going to explode or continue to grow because this is one of those promises that delivers. Mm -hmm. See, fitness is uh, speckled with trends. Like If you look at the fitness industry, it's all trend-based. Everything in this fitness industry is trend. This is the new trend, then this is the next trend, then this is the last trend. But the stuff that sticks around is the stuff that works. Yeah. And what you've seen since the beginning of the fitness industry, if you could call it the beginning, you know, let's say sometime around the 70s and 80s, till now is this nice, slow, gradual growth of strength training. Now it's starting to really take off. And it's not going to go away. See, this is not a trend. Yeah. And I'm talking about traditional strength training. I'm not talking about, you know, the trends of fake strength training like circuit training and stuff like that. But traditional strength training has only grown consistently over time and popularity with the worst marketing of all time because for <laughs> most of it. the time the marketing for strength training was pro bodybuilders which nobody wants to look like and they look like freaks or whatever yeah but the reason why it's growing and still growing and growing faster is it works it's not going to go away and so we want to keep hammering this and every time i hear a fitness quote unquote person uh counter what we're saying either 99 percent of the time they don't understand what we're saying and what they're countering is some message that we're not communicating, or there's that one percent still that still uh, haven't, you know. Well, this is the opposite yet. of like what the the go to recipe was to change up the type of, um, you know, the organization of the programming for the strength training, so that way it would appeal more to your yeah. average person. So it's like we we tried like messing with uh, the arrangement so it's more of this like gauntlet style you know training or it's like you know more cardio based like so we can like merge it all together somehow so mm -hmm. it's like more appealing instead of like just selling what works and then you know really just explaining it in full detail that like listen you know all of this stuff is wasted energy let's just stick to like you know the the root of the thing where that works the best yeah 100 percent Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So, uh, I had a great weekend. This weekend we did made sauce. This weekend with the family. You know, just, oh, that was the traditional week. Yeah, this is the so now this is the first uh, time we did it. Of course, without my grandmother uh, since her passing, so it was also challenging. But the whole family got together, made a bunch of sauce. My my 
three or almost four year old, right? He's going to turn four now in uh, November. <clears throat> he's, he, you know, cause we have, there's lots of kids. So my cousins have kids. So there's all these little kids that are right around the age of like between one and a half to let's say four. It's like all these little kids. Are you hosting at your house now or something? No, it's my mom's house. Okay. It's been at my mom's It's house. always there. Well, it was at my grandma's house for a long time till they got too old to do it. And then now it's at my mom. So my mom's house is where we do the sauce. Okay. After my mom, I don't know where, where we're going to do it. But anyway, we're all there and you know, there's different stations. I've explained it to you guys before, right? It's like outside you have the washing the tomatoes and cutting them. Then inside, there's a machine that you you cook the tomatoes. Then you put them in a machine. It spits out the seeds in the skin. It makes the sauce. Then you jar it. And there's a whole drawing process. So everybody's like in this conveyor belt of working together. And the little kids are just running around or whatever. And so I love the kids that come join me. I'm the tomato. I'm always the tomato cutter for the last I don't know how many years, probably ten years. I'm out there cutting tomatoes, and the kids will come out and help me because it's the job that they're not going to get hurt. They can put the tomatoes in the different you know, jugs of water, they'll splash each other, whatever. So they're doing that. We're having fun. The kids are splashing each other every once in a while. I'll, you know, Hey, make, make sure you move the tomatoes in here and they'll try and help. My son was like, he loved working, loved it. The whole time he was doing the jobs. He was literally putting the tomatoes where they're supposed to. Then he's coming around, he's collecting them in the basket. He's walking in. Of course, my family's eating it up. He's walking <laughs> in like, oh my God. He's, they're saying, he's all determined. He's yeah. such a hard worker. And it's just blowing up his, you know, this, <laughs> mm, he's so proud that he's, you know, helping or whatever. And he's helping in the in the garage and he's coming out and we're just watching it. And I, you know, I try not to praise him too strongly with certain things. I want him to do things because he likes it, not because he thinks other people like it. But yeah. I mean, it didn't matter. The whole family was there. Tell how awesome it was. <laughs> So this was like 9 a.m. till uh, 3 p.m. nonstop, right? We were doing this. Yeah. And then and the, and the, the sauce making continued past that. That was how long my son worked. Dude, we go to bed. You put him to bed. He falls right asleep, right? The kid, and you guys know this with him, he wakes up at 5.30 a.m. no matter what. No matter what, five. We had to go wake him up. It was almost 8 a.m. He's exhausted. Dude, he slept so hard, bro. Uh, that's so that great. Yeah, oh, dude. that's so great. I mean, that, I bet, too, it was a hot weekend, too. So the sun, right? Uh, the sun yeah. outside, working like crazy yeah, like that. Yeah. Dude, Max, so fun. Max had a thing. Uh, was it yesterday? Yesterday or day before yesterday? Uh, so one of the things that we... I, I think I've told you guys this before. He watches uh, Boss Battles, which is basically... Uh, videos of uh, somebody playing Super Mario and it's the part where they are battling the boss in the oh, game. Okay. There's like a whole genre of nothing but that. And, okay. and, and I mean, literally an infinite amount of videos you can watch of all. And if you know Mario, there's thousands of different bosses. So it's like an endless you know, train of, of these videos. And he just, that's all he wants to watch. That's all he ever <laughs> eats it up. Yeah. And so, you know, and we, we let him, that's like, like his treat to do that. But we, it's normally in trade of like him, you know, doing some chores around the house or it's him reading or him doing th his Kumon or doing stuff like that. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. if we do this, then we can, you can have 20 minutes on uh, boss battles with that. And, uh, Katrina and him are driving home and I can't remember if he hadn't done his Kumar and done his, but he's asking her if like, Mommy, can we put? Can I do boss pals when I get home? And she's like, No, honey, we we haven't done this. Or something tells him no, and he just he he starts to get the face like he's starting to cry. And Katrina's like, We we definitely don't want to start crying over boss pals. I'm, I can't help it. Tears are leaking from my face. <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute. Bro. He's so cute. It's happening. He's oh so my god! Cute. It is that. It's I tell you when he does this. Uh, when these moments happen, he's like in such like I've told you guys always like I've, I've never experienced like tantrums the extent yeah. of it is this like you can see the emotion starting to well up in his face and it's all it, emotional dysregulation yeah Whether it's a tantrum or crying right right yeah. and and it's so and it's a really cool thing to watch his ability to to regulate that to not default to a tantrum acting out doing things but he's still a sensitive kid so that when he he's when still he, a kid. Yeah, he's still a kid so when he doesn't get his way <laughs> yeah, he feels it's, it. it still comes up but we've always been consistent with when those times yeah. come that we tell him hey this this is not something we cry over this is that's not how you and then you know and he's trying not to but it's still <laughs> so there great. the tears are leaking dude, out of my face dude i was <laughs> just going the other, anyways. the other morning the other morning <laughs> uh you know it's hard not to give in after it's so that cute. it's so, so hard cuz it is it's so <laughs> cute it's so mild you're like damn dude i just want to give him a hug yeah yeah it's okay buddy take that all day over so yeah, yeah. but then he's also smart and a closer so he knows like if you if he feels that you're like that you're like oh come here buddy yeah then he'll be uh, then he'll switch gears and be like using it so then can i use it daddy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah wait a minute where'd yeah, the tears yeah, go yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're gone all of a sudden yeah no we uh so when we when we go to bed we have a monitor on the kids so we can hear them and sometimes i'll hear my son wake up 
And then I know I got to go. I got to go meet him. Otherwise, he's going to come to the bedroom, and then he's going to kind of mess up the morning and maybe or whatever, right? So I hear some noise, and I'm like, "Oh, he's getting up. Shit, it's five fifteen in the morning. I better get out. You know, I better go out and meet him." So I, you know, quickly put on some pants or whatever, and I open the door, and he's I he sees me. Now I don't see what I, I he does something so fast. I don't I don't process what's happening, but I hear something hit the floor, and he sits down. So I'm like, "What are you doing?" He goes. I'm sorry, Papa. He's like, I forgot to be more sneaky. I'm like, sneaky. <laughs> so I walk over and there's a lollipop on the ground. I'm like, this kid was eating a lollipop and he threw it on the ground. He didn't want me to see it and sat down. <laughs> I forgot to be more sneaky. Yeah, at five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, oh, so then I'm like, so I'm walking with him. And as I'm Where did he find him, it? Well, as we're walking, he's like, uh, Papa, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I wanted to be more sneaky. I wasn't sneaky enough. He walks over and he oh goes, my and it's my wife's purse is out. She has lollipops in there for church. So when yeah. we're in church to get them to sit with during the sermon, and he's figured, yeah, this dude, out. he figured it out, bro. He pulled over a chair, climbed in, got the. <laughs> but it was funny because he saw me and he panicked. dropped it. He threw it and sat down. I'm like, why are you sitting on the ground? What was that sound oh, that no. I just heard? <laughs> and I, but he's honest. Like, I forgot to be more. I forgot to be more sneaky. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. You weren't sneaky enough, dude. <laughs> yeah. I caught you this time. You know, you, know, you just you just reminded me of something I've been meaning to bring up to you guys because. So uh, and I, I, t I think I brought this up like a year or two ago that I knew that this time was coming and I'm really curious of how this unfolds and how we handle it as parents. And that is, I believe we have fully reached, it is unnecessary for us to have a camera in his room anymore. Yeah. Fully. There's no reason. Yeah. He's like, he's completely can communicate. I mean, a that's a real, that's a real like, uh, concern or thing to think about right like how long do you keep a camera i uh, on your kid and i feel like nobody I talks know, I about like this that. i feel like because yeah. it's because it's again Stage. it's it's relatively new tech right just yeah. like 20 yeah. 15 years yeah, ago it wasn't it was, even a discussion yeah before. it was exactly so you know and it's like who are we who's really needing this pacifier is it my son who needs this uh, pacifier or is it me and my wife uh, that need this and so we've reached that where you know i kind of brought it up easy the other day i'm like hey have you thought about when you're going to take the camera down in his room? Like, is it really? She's like, when he's 15. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I made that joke. I'm like, you know, when are you going to wait till he's like 16 years old or something like that? Like, I mean, I don't want to train him to like communicate through the camera with us. Or to know that they're being watched. Yeah, or know that yeah. it's okay that a camera's on you all the time and that's just normal. Yeah. And so we are 100% at this and like I'm you know like patiently waiting for my wife to say hey let's stop doing it because I'm okay with us not having it at all right now and of course there's these positive and and nice parts of it I yeah. get it you there's know also saying? the fear like what if we need to see yeah, of, you? of course yeah. so you know I, I get it but I mean eventually you get to an it's, age dude it's so crazy how how we were raised when we were kids like they, they put you to bed and then I don't know. See you later. Is he okay? I guess. I'll go check on him, but I can't hear any. He could be screaming right now. I'm over here in the garage trying to do something. Like they were, or when you go out with your friends, you were gone. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to my daughter about this. She went somewhere and I, and I could see her location on her phone. Mm -hmm. I could see where she's going. I could text her. I said, answer me right when I'm texting you. We were just, mom's like, call me at 4 p.m. And that well, was it. We went through that this weekend with Everett because he doesn't have a phone, you know, and it's like, we went, I actually took Ethan on a date to, he got, He went to meet up with this girl at, at the boardwalk and that was a big deal. You know, he was all nervous about it. I'm like trying to coach him up. It's going to be fine. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of like rides and things and it's, it's fine, dude. You don't have to talk the whole time. You know, it's like, I don't remember back then, you know, it's like, it's nerve wracking, Hell yeah, dude, you know, dude. like to just spend all this time with just a girl, just you and How old your girl. boy, 15? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, he's about 15. Yeah, bro. Of course. But, you remember that? 15 yeah. years old, so nervous yeah. trying to talk to somebody. Yeah. So he's dealing with that. But then, uh, and so, and Courtney and I had to go do some some errands and all this stuff. And, and, um, Everett wanted to hang out with his buddies, like that group that's in the neighborhood. And it's like, okay, cool. But he was still at the house and we trusted that he was going to, like, you know, get his bike and then go down to the neighbor's kids and all this kind of stuff. But then, uh, he was still at the house and because we could see because of the ring cameras. But like Courtney was just, she started to freak out because she wanted to like get his attention for something and was calling in on the ring, like uh, on yeah. the doorbell and was like, hey, pick up, pick And he wasn't picking up. And so she's kind of, I'm like, he's fine. Like, and she went back and looked and he actually got on his bike, put his helmet on. He went to oh, the neighbors too. and I'm like, see, like, 
it's just it's it's that like loss of control a little bit and like totally. kind of moving on and it's mostly us independence yeah, yeah. it's mo it's mo he he here's the thing too that like because of course it, this always like triggers certain people that are still attached in fact my wife is probably gonna get on to me about this conversation right <laughs> thanks you know so, <laughs> right i'm gonna get that when i get yeah. get it later but it's like I mean, at least what I what I try and exercise is that because I get all the positive things of this, but no one talks about the unintended consequences of these possibilities. Like all this stuff, the ring is such a cool technology. All the cam, the nanit camera, like these are all cool things, and they got great positive things to it. Yeah, you know, your kids less likely to get kidnapped. You can see this stuff. You can see that. Okay, great. But how about talking about the other side of that too? What am I what am I teaching my kid, or what am I training up to be okay with? Like. So like at least asking yourself that question that maybe you know there's a point where this is less good than it, or yeah less good than it is right yeah, than yeah. it was before and, and so, it's such a new thing that we don't even know yes because we we're so we we we're always trying to make an effort to not always pull our phones out and take the uh, take pictures of the kids which is really hard when you got little kids are cute they mm -hmm. do something new oh my god my look at my daughter wearing that hat look what she's doing hurry record it type of deal yeah but the second they know you're recording yeah. They change, change yeah. it, and then they know that they're being filmed. See, I don't know what that's gonna, what, what that because I was never aware of that as a kid because I was that never happened. Uh, if my dad pulled out a camera, everybody knew it because it was a big ass camera on his shoulder, and he well, had this big backpack thing coming down. Yeah, yeah, it was a little unique because uh, my mom was very much like uh, into videoing everything. Like we were trying to, like, so we knew we would hide, you know, or or we'd lean into it and like do some kind of like weird skit and like other dude there's Is a, this when you're into wigs a genre of skits <laughs> dude that like me and my brother were like forced to do <laughs> it's like wait wait oh my god were you dude. forced or did you want to no honest. no i did not want to <laughs> really? like we had to go to okay. front of church and do these like uh performances oh, okay. and they they dude my mom loved it you know because she was in the choir like was like all into the the drama and like creating costumes and so uh, but yeah, it was like there was a lot of those on camera that I wish didn't exist. Dude, speaking of camera and, and, and being recorded and all that stuff, you guys want to feel old real quick? I just saw the statistic, and I, I don't know about you guys, but when when somebody says twenty years ago or something like that, I always think nineteen ninety or something like that. Right? <laughs> you think it's way longer? <laughs> Bro, it's like not listen, that long ago. <laughs> listen, you guys okay? You guys remember the show The Wonder Years? Yeah, love yeah, that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I liked it, but I hated it too because it was this kid, Paul, the kid with the glasses. Yeah. Everybody say I looked like him when I was a kid. He used to get on my face to piss me off. Anyway. Great show. That show, if we had a show today that was depicting, you know, because that that depicted life in the from between 1968 and 1973. 60, yeah. That was 60s 70. to 70s. It That's was depicting? what it depicted. Wow. Okay. And it came out in 1988. Then we watched it through the like early the 90s. 90s, yeah. yeah. Okay. If we had a show like that today, it would be de depicting American life between 2004 and 2009. That's that's an interesting stat. That's like right a there. lame period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forgettable. Yeah. I don't know what would the show be yeah. about. That's a good point. Yeah. Like, uh, it's like weird. what happened? Nothing yeah. really. Boy bands. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What's going on yeah. at that time? TRL. That's a really interesting point. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, but you, but you know what though? It's also be, from our point of view, right? Probably from a a kid just like us at that age. Those, I mean, think about it. Your perception of of life and the world and everything is so, but so am I, different. But am I as tripping you, though right now? Because I feel like the difference between 1968 and 1988, when the first one aired, is a very big difference in the way that people dress, sure. culture. From well, there's a major from shift from your yeah. perspective. So from your is it like that now? from your son or daughter's perspective, they would say the same thing. So there. if we watch, they the would show, be like, "Man, you remember in." In '99, when they we used to do things like this, and now in in 2006 we do that. Like they will have that same perception. Like I'm you, trying to think because 2004. I mean, you already had the internet. You had all this. Like, what would be so? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's not as different in terms of. But maybe you're right. Maybe I mean, how about yeah. driver's license, electric car stuff? How about um, uh, social media? I mean, that's all yeah. huge radical changes in society yeah. that we kind of watched evolve in. Yeah. And so it's less, you know, dramatic for us yeah, as adults. Maybe. But as a kid, I'm sure that was like 
super crazy. They you know? timeline it based on like video game graphics. Yeah, like, <laughs> guaranteed. Yeah, that's like what they would think about. They're like, oh, it's so pixelated and it's, it's a lot better. <laughs> so pixelated. It's like, I mean, what was the style? <laughs> Who like, cares? I, like, what was the typical style? Yeah, you don't know because you haven't seen. You haven't. You haven't <laughs> I'm not. Been, not been, a, been, I'm not giving you a softball. You've been, <laughs> you've been stuck in the same era for thirty years, so you I don't just don't know at all. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. I, I he's like, I don't. Hey, he's like, I don't understand. There hasn't been any changes. There hasn't been any style changes since '04. Well, I mean, I'm I'm sure it looks different, but Google typical 2004 fashion. Oh, man. You, hey, you're, like, make, hey, you're making us look like a bunch of boomers right now, Probably, dude. Uh, <laughs> Probably. I just imagine, like, it's, I don't know, it's like a like frosted hair or something. Was that then? Was it then? And no, then that's like the, 99. That's when I grabbed it. That's the late 90s. 90, that's see, 90s. That's, that's even further that's back. Even back. Yeah. That's the last definitive thing. I think. The 2000s are just so, like, forgettable. It, it, it feels like it, it's. Right? Yeah. I'm telling you guys right now, it's from my perspective. You're right. There must be something. Sure. I've been trying to think. Though. Yeah. You need, we, I mean, it's so distinct. You, you, need, to be talk, to 88, we need, you need to be talking to, like, a 25-year-old right now to get, like, a better understanding. Okay, so does that look, like, radically different? Eh, not really. I mean, Jessica, how was it? It's not radically different. Click what, on, what are we click on images. Right? What are we looking at right now other than a cute girl? You type in, in 2009. Yeah, she has those like are Uggs. 2004 uh, fashion trends. Oh, is that okay. like the Ugg Just thing? Uggs. It had Uggs and Okay, so Uggs. fashion, scroll down. Okay, well, okay, wait, wait, I, I can address something on this, Sal. Okay, if we, like, this, it doesn't look so different. Like, 68 to 88 looks oh, so different. Von okay, Dutch. okay, but here, here's something that has here's something that has changed today that's a little bit different than those eras that is I think is interesting. It has become more popular today, and this is again, this is due to social media. Right, is uh, there's a lot of people today that are wearing '70s era, '80s yeah. era, '90s era because of social media. It's been able, people are able to share this stuff, and where we, like as a nation, followed a fashion trend. Yeah. Trends are so different. Not to mention the the cycles of clothes is radically different today than it was when we were younger too. Yeah, so it used to be like uh, uh, four seasons. In, yeah. in clothes. Yeah. I look up how many seasons like, do you, you know what's interesting? Right? It's crazy. It's like it's right like six now, times to ten times yeah, more. Yeah, but you know what? I guess in Japan, like goth is like a big you know, like, <laughs> like they just found it. You know <laughs> <laughs> they're like all about it. Like, you know like, what though? Some decades are very distinct. And I feel like as we move more into the future, I don't know, because the, the decades don't seem as like if I say when you look at 68 to 88, when I'm using the time span from the Wonder I get what you're saying. It's just, so different. No, I get what you're saying. I just think like that- Like he's it, showing pictures right I think now? it's our perspective. That's Maybe. why. Maybe. And I think you're the things that we, because here's another probably point, we tie these eras and decades so closely to fashion because fashion yeah. was like a big, where fashion cycles so quick now, like a kid who's in their 20s doesn't go like, oh, the difference between yeah, 04 right. era yeah. is close. Yeah, They're like, right. That's so radically different yeah. all the time. They probably don't even yeah. measure that way anymore. They measure probably off of tech and off of video games and are, off of social media. Like, oh my God, you remember when we used to use Facebook? You yeah, know, Facebook yeah. is so, that's what all the old people, like, you know, now you have Snapchat. Yeah. Now you have remember Twitter. You have a remember when we were humans? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remember when we had flesh. Dude, so my, I, I, my do, I do get what you're saying all, with dude. the uh, with like how like a like fashion was very very different. And when you so compare, I guess tech would be a good thing to say because it goes 1968 to 88 tech is very different, right? 68 car to an 88 car, very different, very very different. Very. Although I'd say it went backwards in many ways. 68 cars were a little. So oh, I have a so yeah. I have a prediction on Muscle that. Cars were amazing. So I have yeah, a, I a week. We yeah, were, cars in the 80s after were after like, 70s. We like, we were at we were at a car show this weekend, Doug and I, and uh, downtown uh, Will Glen area. You guys and, do these dates off in the two of you, huh? Yeah, we do. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, cars and company. I think that, and so this will be a really interest. I think we're at a very uh, interesting in, uh, inflection point, I guess you could say, in in the automotive world that. The cars just say 10 years ago are going to become more desirable than the newest stuff right now. And the reason why that is, is because we've gotten so efficient with the speed and horsepower and quickness of these cars, the handability, all this stuff is just the tech is insane in cars that true driving enthusiasts yeah. so like the human element the, vis the getting, visceral yes, parts the gone. human element yeah. is getting phasing it out phase is getting further and further away now that doesn't mean that i don't think that it'll keep going that way and we'll eventually have self dr yeah. self driving cars but i do think there's going to be a real strong pull to going back and i, I notice agree. it more than anything right now in these new new cars yeah. that are coming out oh, right now like you actually have to crank open your your window yes yeah. it's like, well that ooh, you you i mean there was you, a you know that you know that in like okay so just like one car genre like understanding like the Porsche 
Porsche market in general. Uh, if you were to buy a, a say, 10-year-old 911, you'll have to pay more money, significantly more money right now, exact same Porsche 911 uh, model, but in manual. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. It costs more money for the manual, the true yeah. manual, because it's it's more desirable of course. to have that. And so we're losing that analog feel of of the experience. And so as tech continues to evolve, well, this is and why, the car gets better and this better. This is why people hunt yeah. with the bow and arrow still, or sure. you know, why, why they don't have like you know drone mounted machine guns hunting. Because what's the fun? Yeah, because doing still that takes a great lot of great skill. analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great analogy. I think, you know, there, I was think a, there was a point there for a long time where manual was faster than automatic. If if you wanted a faster car, you got the manual version because the the way that they did the timing of the automatic sucked. Yeah, but now it's yeah. the other way around. Completely, you will not drive a car yeah, as fast. That's why people are, people are always. It's so funny if you like, if you've never like if you see the like supercar market. There's no there's rarely ever a car. A Porsche is one of the few that still does. Ha, I even offer a manual yeah, because. Yeah. It's it's become paddle shifting is so much more efficient. The yep. transmissions are so much better that you lose tons of performance by going yep. to a manual. Yep. And, and the idea of a fast supercar is not to be slower, right? So, right. yeah. But again, the people are being drawn back to that, and so I do You're think so connected that, to it with the manual. You yeah, know? it's like yeah. that's why people yeah. love it. You it, even though technology that's, has evolved beyond it, that's such a flex now. I think it's such a flex now to get in a car that's manual and then shift while you're driving. Yeah, but yes. most people are like, whoa, you whoa, can do whoa, that. You what know are how you to doing? Yeah. You're a wizard, yeah. <laughs> dude, yeah. dude. Having to do that when I was in Scotland, like on the right hand side, and then that would left be hard. in the snow. I was like, what am I doing? Like dude. this was like it. It was all. It had been. I don't know. Over 10 years who since it, I had driven a... Who was it that said this to me? I don't know if it was one of you guys or one of my friends. They said that they're buying... that The first car they get for their kid, they're going to find yeah, this manual. I, I'm Is doing that, that. you? Uh -huh. Yeah, I would do that you too. You know why? So they can't text. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a that I didn't uh -huh. say that. That is that's the smart. That I, that wasn't my angle, but I love that. So, I, so it wasn't you. Somebody told me that. I'm like, you're right. Because yeah. if you have a stick shift, you ain't texting. You got to no. you got to change gears. What a good point. Yeah. So if you want your kid to not text while and, driving, and, uh, get him a stick shift. Very smart. And they're gonna have Who to put that? their phone. A, I don't know. Yeah, somebody told smart. me that. That's a pretty. That's a pretty uh, insightful. Until they get to good enough, I used to do it anyway. <laughs> that's true you can do that's it, true dude. i could definitely still text yeah, but see at that point if you're yeah. doing both yeah yeah but then you're driving yeah, skills I know, but I mean, is, it, is it work oh, yeah that's a good <laughs> you're that guy like that one uh, i don't know if you've ever seen that video where he's like uh on an organ and he's hitting all these horns yeah. and everything yeah, at once, like trying to find his wife's dude. orgasm dude. I, I wonder if yeah. that would work or it would to justin's point backfire on you you just end up still texting at least not off. for the first year where your kid has to really learn they're not yeah. going to do both no right? yeah yeah it's it's a good deterrent i think that's that's totally smart totally 100%. Yeah. yeah, no, that's, that's, yeah. It, sound, it sounds smart. Yeah. I'm, curious, I'm curious to somebody, I'm curious to a dad. At, at least initially. Does yeah. driving stick shift reduce cell phone or texting in the car? I, I, I bet you could Google that, Doug, and see. I mean, uh, it, it, Plus, theor it's a, it's theoretically, it has too. to, right? Yeah. Because it's you. there's at least some time you have to have your hand on there. You're, you're holding both the phone and the. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would have done that probably. <laughs> exactly. You'll find a way. Yeah. 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 Kids anyway, would. So I, I was doing some, uh, some reading on um, red light therapy and really just kind of, okay, like, how does this work exactly? Because it's a very strange phenomenon. You shine a certain wavelength of red light. Uh, on your skin. Oh, look, it does. Stick shift does help reduce texting. See? Good job. Thanks, Doug. So when you shine the red light, uh, you, this, these red light uh, frequency or wavelength goes to the cells and it makes this, the mitochondria work more. That's what we've been saying. It's weird, right? So what it literally does is this. Your mitochondria turn the red light into energy like a damn plant. It's literally like, there's almost like a plant with photosynthesis Red light goes into your cells. The cells use the light and convert it into energy. And so what you're doing is you're literally energizing your cells. Your cells are utilizing this red light and turning it into so energy. So the way I've explained it, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's just like, okay, you, you basically your, your, the, the mitochondria in your cell is like a, a battery that you are charging with this light. So it's like you are, you are charging That's up. That's not a bad analogy. That's kind of the best way yeah. I've been able to try and explain it yeah. to like family or client. They're like, "What the hell is going on here?" It's like, and that's the and that is like the the hub, right? Is mm -hmm. inside these cells, and by you shooting this light, it charges it up. So, any cell that uses mitochondria, which is all cells, if you provide more energy to the mitochondria, then those cells will operate better. Better, right? Mm. This is why red light therapy and studies, pretty much anywhere they test it, does it improve skin? Yes, it does. Does it regrow hair? 
Yes, it does. Does it help with wound healing? Yes. Pain? Yes. Dementia and cognitive function? Yes. People wearing, putting red light on their scat on their skulls and and shooting it up the nose so it gets near the brain improves Isn't that cognitive weird? function. So doesn't I, it kind of point to like what if we came from Mars? Yeah. Why? Because it's a red planet. Red planet so, no. So what I think, <laughs> to your point, Sal, this, this is, is why it, it, this is why I think the future is beds, bathrooms, things like this are being going to be converted to like as people understand that it has so many benefits to it. Yeah. Why not? Where can I just organically build it into my house structure? to where it's naturally always hitting me yep. like this. I really think that that's where we'll move to is that like anything else technology it's a, it's not cheap right now because the technology still It's, in the it's affordable now though. You it know is. It used to be. No, you're right. Yeah. And, and it'll get more and more affordable just like cell phones or anything else like that. It'll get it'll get better and more affordable yeah. and we'll get to a point where I think people like will have a station right built next into to their your... bed somehow They're... or in the ceilings well, in their so, bathrooms. So not all red uh, light therapy is the same, right? You want to use the same wavelengths and concentrations that you find in the studies. Otherwise, you'll have to use whatever cheap red light you have 50 times to get the benefits of one time. Nonetheless, like Juve, we work with Juve. I think you could buy like a small panel for uh, like a little over a hundred bucks. Maybe look it up, Doug, and let's see what that looks like. You know what it used to cost? You know what a red light therapy used to cost? It's expensive. You'd have to go to your dermatologist or really high-end salons would have them. And those machines that they used to have were like 15 grand. Yeah. Back in the day. This is like all skin treatment yeah. places. This is like way back in the 70s they yeah. even did stuff. Like this, well, right? even, even as far back as 10, 15 years ago, yeah. you would have to pay 50 bucks for a treatment because this machine was tens of thousands of dollars. But now you can have it um, in your home. What does it say there, Doug? Yeah, it's not a hundred bucks. No, no, no. The hundreds. The, the, the oh, small several one. hundred. Yeah, it's uh, $500 yeah. for so small there. one. Yeah. And you got one in your home. Yeah, which, like I said before, it was thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Just I mean, cool. I so I shared on one of the last times we had a Juve commercial. I had some family member that bought like an off brand, and I got on the website to look it up and so that. And so this is where they have to use it for like ten years. Or well, no, it's 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 not that crazy, but it is uh, like five times the amount. Yeah. And when you think about okay, if I only have to spend five to ten minutes in this to get five times the amount of what this other thing is, you, you have to do the math on like how much time. Yeah you have to spend in front of that just to get the same exact. So it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you might spend a little bit more money up front for that, but the re the real uh, the reality of you spending half hour to hours of time in front of that just to just to match mm -hmm. the same is, is ridiculous. Yeah, so it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I found some cool uh old um facts from back in the day. Uh, you guys are both we're all wrestling fans when we were kids, right? We yeah, yeah, like yeah, WWE. yeah, you shared that clip. You shared a clip that I remember watching. Do you remember those? Yes. That's why I shared it. So when you shared that clip, it was a, a so by the way, my first initial like wanting a bulldog actually started from the 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 Brutus the Barber. Uh, Brutus right? the Barber or was it the yeah. British Bulldog? No, he wasn't. Oh no, Brutus the Barber didn't have a bulldog. No, was, no. His, his teammate, his wrestling teammate okay. one time was the Barber. Right? Yeah, oh, was and a, I think it was the British Bulldog. British Bulldog. Yeah. It was British Bulldog. I know why he, and, liked, he was jacked. He yeah. was a super jacked. And they guy. and he had a bulldog. It was like their first introduction to him. But yeah. anyways, I remember that clip that you sent over, you sent like a famous, you know, match that was going to happen. Like That's I'm, where they do the hype. And almost 100%. Uh, I watched that WrestleMania, whichever one that was. Because yeah. there was, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember how many of those you ordered as a kid. I probably watched, I don't know, probably six years that I remember probably paying for pay-per-view. We never paid because we stole it. We had that, we had that, <laughs> <laughs> we had that, we had that the scrambler thing. The black uh -huh. chip or whatever. Yeah, dude. There's some, so, of friends had the oh, ones, yeah. listen, people, the, the, the guys, the people who would work on your cable, they're the ones that would sell it. They would mm. come work on your cable and they say, hey, for a hundred bucks, yeah, I'll give you this box, hook it up, and then you can watch whatever yeah, you want. Box. Yeah, so that's what we had. So I watched Muscle Mania, uh, Muscle Mania on those for yeah. free. But anyway, I looked it up. Did you, oh, so so uh, Hulk Hogan, the most popular of all time, right? He started, I have a picture of it. I'll show you guys a picture of him. Yeah, Hulk's the best. He started as a uh, wrestler and he was known as the Boulder Brothers with uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. So they were both partners originally oh, when they wrestled. Here's, look at this old I picture. I didn't remember reading we'll that. We'll make sure we put it up on the Oh, YouTube. wow. Look at them together. <laughs> Just two, golden locks. Two total, yeah, meatheads yeah. or whatever. I didn't, I didn't remember. I don't yeah, remember they were, they were partners. So Brutus the Barber started as far back as... Uh, as Hulk Hogan. Oh wow! And so it was. It was. It was Brutus the Barber, and then the British Bulldog yeah. ended up being a tag team at one yeah, point. Yeah. yeah that's do you remember right. what Brutus the Barber would do if he beat you? He cut your hair. <laughs> he cut yeah, your yeah, hair that's, off. That's, that's kind of messed yeah, up. Yeah, he cut your hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That was the, that was the time that I, I remember. Like I, watched, I went through a little uh, time in my life. I don't remember when I stopped watching wrestling. You remember when, how old you were when you stopped wrestling, watching wrestling? 
I, when I real when I when you stop wearing underoos, did, yeah. really? when you realize you had underoos, like, yeah, why underoos? Yeah, of course I had I underoos. Did. What are underoos? Is Underwear, like the, but it would have tiny uh, whities with like the print, you know, like wrestlers, yeah, or, like, like, fast cars, uh, yeah, like GI Joe, and yeah, oh, like did all you, little. Did Luke you ever have that? Little stuff? Kid, I mean, stuff. A little, like Max's age, you yeah. did. Yeah, Max See, has that. He has Mario. I, I like, had underwear from Italy, so my underwear looked like <laughs> <laughs> like lingerie already. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I was kissing, He's like three years old, bikini with cut. Yeah, you know, I was wearing speedos, dude. <laughs> but right a, banana, a banana thong when he was like right out the gates as a little kid. You know, I didn't realize. I told you guys this before a long time. Wow. I didn't realize it was weird till junior high when you change in front of me oh for the God. first time. Everybody's like, what I never are you changed, wearing? Bro, I like, never Sal's changed. a porn star. I never changed in front of Wait, my look peers. Look at this guy. Ever. Right? I had my cousins. My cousins and I, we all wore the same so underwear. Are a stripper? Our, our parents were like, everybody's taking their clothes off and I see a bunch of boxers. Like you see in TV, boxers. I'm like, people actually wear yeah. boxers? Yeah. I take mine off and my friend's like, what the hell are you wearing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> underwear? Wait, this isn't normal? <laughs> like, what, you look like a... <laughs> Oh like, my god! You look like funny. a Chippendale. Oh my god! <laughs> but I had to own it with pride, you know. Yeah, oh. yeah, definitely. That you know, it. we were we were we were just we were talking like uh, technology and air. You know, I saw a clip of this, and I wanted to ask Doug to look up and see if this is like happening consistently now. Uh, I saw like a uh, Instagram reel or something, and a guy was getting candy delivered to his house from Walmart via drone. Wow. So is that officially happening now? So look up Walmart drone delivers candy. How, yeah, are now, these just like people that they're using as examples? Of like here's what could happen, and then they film it, or I don't know, because it's available it, to the public. It came, it came. It was a drone, and then it it came. He and he was videoing it before it got there, and it got and he, you see it come in, and then it gets to his house, and then it doesn't even land. It just goes. It, it drops down the Walmart bag, lowers it, uh, he unclamps it, and then it comes back and then it takes off. And it had a Walmart how. How long? It looks like official. Yeah, it's official. It is official. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder hey, if hold th on. this Christmas is going to be like, <laughs> oh, you know, because everywhere. Because Walmart and Amazon, like, they, you know, they're always yeah, battling. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this is a step, you know, a step ahead for so them. They, so it is official. Is it all or is it be on the lookout for drone delivery near you? Yes. I think you have to find one in your location. How, but. how long now? You, let's make a little guess your prediction. How long until we start <sighs> I'm seeing. I'm invested in hawks. <laughs> Into drone pirates. Of course. Yeah. There's going to be drone pirates, Of right? course. Yeah. I mean, I would be so afraid to... Fly. I mean, I would fly a candy bar. I would throw. I'd roll, roll the dice on a dollar. Well, they'd have to give you insurance. <laughs> yes, I'm sure Walmart would say, if it doesn't get to your door, you want to Oh, for, for sure. I mean, that's yeah. what they already do with Amazon. That happens all the time, right? I was supposed to get a Ninja Cream not that long ago sent to my mom. And that, man, I tell you what, that's one of the cool things about some of the stuff we do now. Like, literally called in and said, hey... It didn't get to her house, and they sent out another one, and then it eventually actually ended up coming. So she had two of them, but they let they literally did you know, give it back, or did you tell you just pretend they, like you we, never got we it? did end up shipping. They, they asked you to, but it's like on. It was like I could have not. You weren't like yeah, I never got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I thought that was really interesting that they did that without yeah. no hesitation, and that's not cheap. Those things are kind of expensive yeah, yeah, for yeah, those yeah. those things. Um, so how are they going to fight off drone pirates? Because, I mean, that's going to be like, people are going to throw nets up. Yeah, but I mean, or... it's breaking the law. So it's like stealing, no matter how you look at it. Yeah, so. but what's the sky going to look like with all these? Think of all the Amazon deliveries that we have now. Yeah, right? and there has to be like times where it's accept acceptable, right? Like if it's like early in the morning and it's like. Ugh. Yeah, just Well, <laughs> it would be just the same way that airplanes I'm... do this, where it's like you have, okay, Walmart flies at 75 feet. Uh, Amazon flies at one twenty. You just have you would have so air, I, heights that you fly. So at, what I read, so you don't you don't conflict. What does that say? Another way to rest to secure positions is to cover them with nets. And okay, so I, I, it's gonna be it's gonna. My point is, it's gonna produce new challenges <laughs> and, and problems. So what I was what are you reading? Doug? I'm cracking up with these uh, search results. How do you fight drone swarms? How do you fight a drone? <laughs> that's real. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's real. We're going to have to figure I mean, that out. It's, it's, it's one step closer <laughs> to I didn't know that we yeah. were actually officially doing this already. I knew that it was they were talking about it, but that's what made me bring this up. I was like, dude, is this happening now? Like, are we actually getting drone delivery? So what I, what I read about this a while ago, maybe, maybe it's different now, but basically there'll be a big um, delivery truck and it's going to drive into an area then it opens up the side door and then the drones come. So you're still going to have drivers. That makes sense. Parking yeah. that near makes sense. the, the like delivery zone. Like you've got 40 deliveries in this neighborhood. Yep. They can all go out and at once. And it just opens the door and then That's they all actually, bzz, 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 fly out. That makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. okay. Instead of everything flying from Walmart to a house, it's like, hey, we've got 40 deliveries in this, the San Jose That's area right. within this block radius. Right. You drive there, you open up, and now what the guy would have to go do individually, all those drones can go at one time and back. Yep. 
that would be really that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then you're not conflicting with a lot of crazy flying all over the place. It also would, would restrict. It wouldn't be they're right there. You would know right away if somebody. Yeah, stole it or, or yeah. knocked it down or what that, and you're not that far away. You so think they're going to put restrictions on personal drones then? Because then the, there already are restrictions spot. on personal drones. Well, more. Oh, there's a lot. There are. Yeah, the, like there's been a few times where I wanted to bring mine to like go do something. I'm like, oh, that you're going to get like a permit. For yeah, all kinds of stuff. There's, and I see signs all over the place like no drones or this. Like so, there's a lot of areas where. You like I think the last one was actually when we were out at the the Truckee house and I was like oh this would be cool we'll fly a drone while we're golfing and do a thing like that it's like no nah, you said can't no. yeah oh, wow. there's a lot of areas where they they restrict it it's like and the only areas that aren't restricted are all the lame areas like you could <laughs> yeah. be out in the middle of nowhere and go fly your drone but if you want to fly it in residential you can get in trouble for that of course yeah. people want you to look in their backyard yeah um, oh. Adam what was it you were talking about with uh, foot strength David Wack you had saw some oh no yeah, you I'm, know I, I wanted well, I wanted to give I wanted to make him our shout out first of all today because I don't think we've shouted him out. Have we, David Weck? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. So David Weck is he's a he's a character. He I've been is, following man. him for uh, quite some time. I think Justin introduced to me uh, uh -huh. introduced him to me first. It was actually I started following him back when we went when we started diving deep into foot foot strength and stuff. And so he's like a running specialist. I also believe that he's responsible for the Bosu ball. Um, so understands biomechanics mm -hmm. on a on a very deep level. And a lot of his stuff is like foot strength, ankle mobility, and he does all these really cool exercises. And so I wanted to bring him up uh, as like a, a shout out today anyways, but he was doing some some exercises and breaking down the entire foot and the importance of why you train it a certain way and what we do in regular shoes, how we just put the feet to sleep and we just mm -hmm. kill all the dexterity and flexibility and mobility in our feet by these shoes that we've all been wearing for so long. Yeah. And just reminded me of our partnership with Zero. It's like, you know, this is definitely a trend that you see growing is because more and more people are becoming aware of that. So, you know, I, I love sneakers. I'm a sneaker head, but I also recognize the, the purpose of shoes like that and how important it is because you're otherwise you have weak ass feet. And so yeah. his content's really good. So if you haven't seen his stuff, I don't know if you've That's attention one of the, the, the biggest like uh, deficit I, I found uh, in, if I was to go back and train again is to dress, you know, foot early, strength. early, early, yeah, a lot earlier. And like, it, you know, it's usually the root of, of all the dysfunction that goes up the kinetic chain. And so, you know, to, to, to get on top of that and really work on a lot of those drills is is great. He does a lot of the stuff too with those little platforms. I don't know if you saw. Like yeah. he has a patent for like uh, where you place your feet at at a slight angle, like a forty five, and then you know inverted, and and you do squats and you do all that kind of stuff. But it's just challenging, you know, the ankles to strengthen within. That. This is my goal for my son, right? So I think if I do a good job as a dad of integrating like shoes, like zero shoes, giving, taking his shoes off completely when, when we're in places that he doesn't need his shoes and doing things like that, that challenge it from early age, it just becomes a way of life for him. And he'll have mm -hmm. good, strong, stable, mobile feet and ankles because it's all just a part of his life versus just like defaulting to how we all did growing up, which is high top sneakers, lace them up as tight yeah. as possible, big two inch heel. I mean, like, yeah. so I think if I can just integrate that early on in those behaviors and introduce like shoes, like zero shoes to him. So that I think that I will counter a lot of probably the issues that we all probably right. had to deal with going through with our, our feet and ankles. So, but yeah, check his stuff out. I mean, his, his stuff is really good. Paleo Valley is a company that makes paleo-inspired snacks and supplements. My favorite product of theirs are their meat sticks. These are grass-fed meat sticks. they got great macros, high in protein. They're healthy. They last a long time, easy to travel with. They're not dry. They're delicious. you got to check them out. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump, and on that link, you'll get 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Carly from Utah. Hi, Carly. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Hey, Carly. How, are you? How are you? Good. Good. Okay, um, before I just jump into my question, I have to tell you guys that I was able to talk to you about a year ago, um, and that question was more for me, and you guys convinced me to go on a reverse diet. I feel like if I hadn't heard that come directly from your guys' mouths, I never would have done it. Um, it was amazing. Like I was sleeping so well, everything you guys talked about, what would happen, happened. And leading up to that, we also talked about how my husband and I were going to try and get pregnant again. And I have no idea if the two are correlated. 
but maybe being at a little bit higher body fat percentage um, and reversing into that. Our first embryo transfer worked. Yeah. So I'm currently seven months pregnant. Congratulations. That's awesome. So just thank you guys. Thank you so much. That's oh, that's great. That's so awesome. That's so great, great to hear. News. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So let me go ahead and just read my question. So this one is about a client of mine. So about two months ago, I signed on a client who was recently coming off a prep from her second bikini show. Her goals were to properly reverse diet and train in a more athletically minded way. We found her maintenance calories and I started her on MAPS performance. She said that she's loving the different style of training and that she feels stronger in the gym. The problem she's having is that she's constantly telling me that she's feeling fluffy and therefore doubting the process of a slow reverse and adding calories. I've tried reassuring her that this is most likely more of a mental practice and barrier as she's probably used to seeing herself be extremely lean while prepping for a show. She has a trip coming up in a few weeks, end of September, and wants to feel good about herself while on the trip. While I'm positive she looks great and healthy, I don't want to discredit her feelings or perspective. What would you tell this client if she were yours? And would you continue to increase calories or keep her closer to her current maintenance leading up to this trip? Yeah. Do you know what her body fat percentage is now? I don't. She's pretty lean. Still. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is what, here's the deal. Um, you, you don't lie. You, you stay honest. You say, well, yeah, you are. You're gaining body fat. You're supposed to. We're supposed to gain some body fat along with some muscle in this process. Your strength is going up. That's what we're going to focus on. And what I'm going to have you do is I want you to not weigh yourself and also don't steady yourself in the mirror like I know you are. So stop taking things off, looking at the mirror, looking at your body from different angles. Try to avoid those triggers, but we're moving in the right direction. And if you ever want to come back down, it's going to be a lot easier. And if we don't do it the right way, then we can get we can hit some real, real bad, hard plateaus and or uh, big challenges. But when you come out of a show and you reverse diet – and you do it properly, that the properly does not mean you don't gain body fat. There's this weird misconception like, oh, if I reverse diet properly, I'll kind of stay the way I looked. During. No, no, you're supposed to gain some body fat coming out of a show. She should be walking around anywhere between 17 to 23% body fat to stay healthy. Competing in a show brings you much lower than that, and it's a, an unhealthy body fat percentage. Just like you experienced yourself, you said you don't know if there's a correlation between gaining some body fat, adding calories, and getting successfully pregnant. There definitely is. 100%, there's a connection with that. In fact, I know many women whose advice from their fertility specialist was, go gain some body fat because this isn't going to work. So uh, my point is, she's going to feel fluffier because she's going to get fluffier, and you're supposed to. That's normal. The challenge is in your mind, and I think you're right with that. That is 100% what's going on. Yeah, you're, Carly, you're you're on the right track with everything you're doing, everything you're saying. Um, this is when I talk to coaches, though. This is the thing that I like to communicate to you out of this is, you know, remember this, and because this won't be the last client that you get like this. And one of the most powerful things that we can learn to do as coaches is when you when another client presents itself like this is forecasting this well before it comes here. So like, let's say when she first hired you, when you start telling her about the process and then you even say things like, and then what's going to happen is you're going to start to feel a little fluffier than what you're used to. And then you're going to come to me saying, I'm discouraged yes. and I don't feel like I'm seeing results. And you like literally tell her what, she's tell gonna her what she's going to say so that when this moment happens, you can just kind of smile at her as she's saying it. And she's going to go, I know you told me I was going to say this. And then you go, well, what did, what did I tell you that we need to do? Right. So it's uh, it's much more challenging to to overcome it and handle it when the emotions come up. They weren't ready for it. They weren't sure they were going to feel this way, and now they're there. And then now, as a trainer, we're kind of like trying to explain and scramble to define the science that's happening and what why we got to stay the course. Versus remembering that this type of client will not be your last one like this. And when you sit down at the very beginning and they enroll with you, is like telling her that this is going to happen such an easier uh, obstacle to handle when you set the table that she's going to tell you those things. It's so powerful because it it prepares them. It prepares them ahead of time so that when it happens, it doesn't feel like you're just trying to counter their feelings. So you can do that now too. You can say, yeah, of course you're going to feel fluffy because the point is we are trying to gain some body fat along with strength and muscle and say, so here's what's going to happen over the next couple months as we continue, continue on this, uh, this this process, you're going to feel even bigger. 
you're going to start noticing things aren't going to fit the way they used to, and you're going to start questioning if you're doing the right things. But you're also going to notice the following. Better sleep, better mood, better stronger. libido, and you're going to be much stronger. Pay attention to those things. Those are all good signs. So you want to forecast the challenges, but also forecast the positives, because then she'll be like, oh, you did tell me I'm going to feel better. I am going to get more sleep. My libido is going to be better. But you also told me I'm going to come to you and complain because I'm going to feel fluffy. Okay, I was ready for this type of deal. So you can still do this, by the way, because she's still in the, in the beginning process. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I think the only challenge right now, because I have had clients where it's like, trust the process, trust the process, right? You're going to feel this way. Um, and going through it myself was helped me forecast that, yeah, right? right? But where she, I think is now in this mindset of she looks in the mirror, like you said, she's studying, she's not seeing the, all the lines that she was on stage. Um, and then she has this, you know, trip coming up and she wants to feel confident for this trip. So should I just keep her at maintenance where she's eating right now? Or should I just tell her, keep trusting the process for the next four weeks? Like, this is what you're going to see. What would you guys do how, with that curveball? How long, how long has four she been weeks. on the reverse diet? To only two months. So she's eight weeks post show. No, in fact, she hired me not even coming off the show she, when her contract ended with her previous coach who coached her through the show. There was like a few week buffer there. Okay. So how long ago did she finish the show? Um, I would say probably 12 weeks. Okay. So she's 12 weeks post show, eight weeks reverse dieting with you four weeks until this trip. Mm -hmm. And how far up did you get her in calories from where she was? How much have you guys increased? Uh, 200, which she was about fifth between 15, 1600. And now she's sitting at about 1800, oh, 200 to 300. Still, she's still too low. Yeah. You know what? You could, you could play some tricks with water if you want to say, Hey, look, I can do a couple things to make you feel like you look a little different for the, for the, for your trip. We can drop your carbs, bump your fats. But no, I wouldn't cut her calories. I mean, she's so low. Yeah. Because, and even that, no. I would be careful. Because she's so low, I would communicate this way. It's like, hey, I could I could cut you to an unhealthy place. We're going to start this back over. And we can, and we can, you know, lean out a tiny bit before you go on this just so you can feel, I guess, better for a little bit. But then we're only setting ourselves back, you know, this many more steps. And so it, that's only extending how much longer you're going to need me to coach you through this. So I yeah. mean, if you really think that's a, a good idea, I don't. If you ask me what I think we should do as your coach, I think we should trust the process, keep going the direction we're going, but we're far from a, a healthy place metabolically yeah. to be putting you right back into a cut. Um, so I, I would communicate. It would be different if you already had her up to say like 2,400, 2,500 calories or something like that already. Cause no, then, yeah, no. you know what? Because then maybe I go, oh, you know yeah. what? Let's run her on a cut for four weeks. You know, down to two thousand. And, and, and I never even, I never even um, thought about cutting her. I wanted to just keep her. Like, yeah. let's just keep you eating right here because she was so low already. I, I'll tell you something. Okay, you, she can also grow into a slight cut. And what I mean by that is, if you add a little muscle on her body, her percentage will go down. She'll see a little more definition. To be quite honest with you it would be smarter to continue to reverse her up into the, the, the trip. Oh, yeah. Because at 1,800 okay. calories, if she goes on the trip and decides to eat whatever she wants, she's going to come back yeah. and it's going to mentally really screw her. So I would actually say to her, you know what? I, here's what I want to do with you. I want to build a little muscle leading up to your trip. And so I'm going to actually put you uh, on another reverse. You're at 1,800. I'm going to bring you up to 1,950. And we're going to and we're gonna okay. stay there until, the, yeah, that's what I would do. Because she's going to okay. go into this trip at 1,800 at maintenance, you know? Not necessarily mm -hmm. a good place to be. Now, how did you land her as a client, considering she was with somebody else? Was she unhappy with uh, how how her diet was put together, and then you got a hold of her? How'd that happen? No, so I actually knew her through college softball. We both played college softball. I was just a few years ahead of her, um, and so she's always kind of followed me. and And I'll be honest, like I was very nervous when she messaged me. I was like, I I don't coach, or at least I haven't coached anybody for a show, right? Um, and she's like, no, no, no. I just want to reverse diet. I see what you're preaching and that's what I want to do. And I'm like, okay. So that's how she okay. found me is because I, I'm not coaching her for a show. I, I kind of specialize in the reverse diets and the strength building, Good. especially for women. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would just lean mm -hmm. into that up, up Good. to her trip. Yep. Yep. Okay. 
Okay. Awesome. And what should I communicate? Like whenever she tells me, yeah, I'm, I'm just feeling, I'm feeling fluffy. That's normal. Like, say that's okay. normal. Like yeah, as soon as she said, that's yeah. totally normal. Of course you do. That's, that's what right. I would say. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, of course you do. Yep. Very normal. Yeah. You Very went normal. up in 300 calories. You're not in this super yeah. depleted state. Yeah. It's Body's holding more water. Yep. It's all, no it's all normal, all part of the process. Yep. And, and reminding her that, you know, this is why so many fail at reverse dieting because the mental psychologically part. it messes with their head and then they revert back to old behaviors. And so, you know, Hey, that's part of why you hired me yep. is I'm going to help you through this process and lean on me. I can be your soundboard. Every time you get discouraged like that, reach out to me and I'll remind you that, Hey, you're doing good. This is, this is part of the process. Stay the course. By the way, there's two ways to get more definition. One is to lose body fat. The other is to build muscle. So you could mm -hmm. also say, Hey, you know what I'd rather do with you? Let's see if we can gain three pounds of lean body mass in the next four weeks. That'll give you more definition and a faster metabolism. So you can have more fun on your trip. Awesome. And she's, uh, she just started week seven of maps performance. Um, so that that'll finish before her trip. What would you guys recommend that I put her into next? Ooh, how about like a stronger power Maps, lift? anabolic, strong power lift. Those are all good options. Symmetry. Mm -hmm. That's a good option too. Yeah. I, a I especially think where she's an ex athlete, like, yeah, I think she'd have a lot of fun with that. Then just go strong. Do you have that program? I don't. All right. You do now. We'll send it to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I might use it for myself, too. Yeah, awesome. you got it. Yeah. Awesome. You got it. <laughs> hey, and congratulations again. Yeah, yeah. Exciting, Thank Carly. you guys so yeah. much. So Thank great. you. Thanks, Carly. You know, I got to say this. People think they're going to achieve a, uh, a certain level of happiness when they go on a trip and they change mm -hmm. their body a little bit. They think, oh, my God, if I go on that trip and I look this much better, it's going to make the whole experience so much better. That's not true. The, the truth is the experience of the vacation comes from the experience of vacation, the people you're with, the connection, the enjoyment, the being present. I've done both. I've been on trips where I'm ultra conscious of myself and others when I'm not. And I tell you what, it's way more enjoyable yeah. when I'm not. Way more enjoyable. You just end up looking for approval from other people and yep. that ruins the whole experience. <laughs> totally. Our next caller is Jennifer from California. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. How Hi, can we Jennifer. help you? What's happening? Hi guys. Thank, thank you for taking my call. Um, this is in regards to my son. So I'm going to try not to move. I'm on my break at work and this is the only spot I have service. So bear with me. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Um, okay. So I can't read off of my question, but from my memory, um, my son, he's 15 years old. He plays high school sports. He's in basketball and he, Every time after his games, um, he's very competitive. So every time after his games, he's been getting really bad muscle spasms. And they're mainly in the hamstrings. Um, he does have Oshkosh slaughters in his knees as well. Um, so it's just pretty painful for him. I try, I mean, I'm a nutrition coach. I, I'm a personal trainer. And so I try to instill in him the importance of hydration, electrolytes, food, like all of the fun stuff. But I'm his mom. So he doesn't doesn't want to listen to me half the time. So um, I guess my question is just how how would you guys go about just trying to explain the importance? He, the sports doctors at a school say that he should go to the doctors. I don't think the doctors are going to do anything. I really think it's just dehydrated muscles from the way that he talks about it and the fact that it only happens after games. So... I don't know. I kind of brought it here. I was hoping to have him with me, but school started. We weren't able to get in during summertime with you guys, unfortunately. So I was like, well, I'll record it and hopefully he'll be able to just watch it. <laughs> so. Yeah, great. Yeah, you can play it for him. You're probably right. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. You're probably right that it's uh, uh, some dehydration, electrolyte imbalance. So I would go, you know, before his game, I would have him drink a lot of water with electrolytes in it before the game. And then during the game in his water bottle, I'll put that in there. The other thing too is that, you know, spasms can also sometimes come from muscle imbalances, or at least they can contribute. Mm -hmm. So for, and you, you mentioned Oshkid Slaughter, you mentioned basketball, his age. I would look at his ankle mobility yeah. and his hip mobility. Uh, those two areas, when those are kind of off, you, you tend to see issues in the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have MAPS Prime Pro, um, I would look at some of the mm -hmm. hip movements in there and ankle movements, and you can do those as quote unquote warmups before the game. And that would actually improve his performance as well. He'll find that he can run faster, jump higher, 
And this is all true. And the reason why I'm saying this is I'm also selling it because I hope he watches this. Yeah. And I know how 15 year olds, <clears throat> uh, you know, how to sell them. It's like, yeah, you'll get less cramps, but you'll also play better if you do the electrolytes and you do some of the some of the hip and ankle mobility yeah, movements. If he can prime and do uh, some priming movements for his ankles and his hips, it's going to make a tremendous difference. I mean, even just we had a lot of uh, shin splints and doing tibialis raises ahead of time and then hydrating and making sure we had like element T and we were making sure the, the athletes were hydrated, uh, you know, and had electrolytes. It, it, it made the whole experience so much better for them. And plus they played better because their endurance and their stamina uh, weren't quite as affected. So um, yeah, it, any way you can sell him on the fact that his performance is really going to increase. That's really the angle I'd always take, especially with mobility with a lot of the athletes. Yeah, I don't have much to add than the boy, the boys have already said. The only thing I would add is if he's not already following our friend Paul Fabritz, PGAF performance, he's got to follow him. Uh, I think he's the probably the elite uh, best uh, trainer coach for uh, basketball uh, in particular. Yeah, I agree. He's been on our show before. Okay. Um, he has incredible content on social media, so on Instagram, YouTube. He's got a podcast. Um, he's, I mean, he's trained some of the best NBA athletes, and he's brilliant. And yeah. so if he's not following his – and he definitely understands the importance of mobility drills and priming before he gets in. So he, he'll and get maybe a Maybe seeing some of the pro athletes he works with, he'll get incentivized. Like, you know, sometimes it takes that, like, for a young athlete to see, you know, one of the pros doing it. Yeah. I, have you tried LMNT oh, with him? Oh, 100%. Um, so we haven't tried it with him. No, I used to take it. I mean, I take it religiously. Um, I... He wasn't a fan of how salty it was. I mean, honestly, it is a lot. Um, but he does like the liquid IVs, but I just hate, I mean, I hate all the additives in it. So. Yeah, you could just add more water or put less. Yeah, I was like, going to say, you do yeah. half, like, yeah, mm -hmm. my, my Put in a big-ass like jug too. of water. Yeah. yeah. He'll get used to okay. it. Okay, yeah. yeah. We'll go ahead and try that, yeah. Because, like, I, he wants to go, I mean, he wants to go professional. So, I'm like, dude. You're already a soft. He's a sophomore now. He's starting his second year in high school. So yeah. I'm like, you got to get it together now. You take care if you of your body. Make it. Yeah. No, that's hey. I tell you what. Exactly. <clears throat> I tell you what, that's the, the difference between kids now <clears throat> and the ones that go all the way are not, not only do they have the athletic ability and gift and the work ethic, but then they're now also getting on this stuff. It's like, it's so competitive now that you can't just rely on your talent and just your work. I think you also got to put the work into the, the totally. rehabbing and the recovery, all the preventative stuff, all that stuff. I mean, that's what these, the, the kids now that are coming out of high school are, they have already built these disciplines. And now it's a, it's a different, it's a different monster today than it was 20 years ago. And so you can't just be a talented kid and go all the way. You gotta be, you gotta be willing to put all this extra work in if you're going to be that successful. Yeah, no, that's perfect. I appreciate that, guys. That's really good advice. And then I'll definitely, um, I have Prime. I don't have Prime Pro. Um, we'll, we'll send that. But I can get that. Out. So we'll send it to you. Does, is Prime, oh, okay. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll get them on that. So ankle and hip mobility is going to be huge for the hamstrings, you're saying. Yes. Oh, you're going to do ankle and hip mobility so. uh, about for, for 10, 15 minutes before he does any like hard physical activity. Any basketball, for sure. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I appreciate it. I do have them on maps performance now too. So Perfect. um I'll throw I'll throw Prime Pro in there as well. So awesome. Good good for you. Awesome. Right, Jennifer. That's great, Jennifer. Thank you guys. I'm gonna make sure he listens to this because like I said, doesn't always listen to mom, but maybe he'll <laughs> we, we listen got to you. you guys. We got you. Get him following Paul Fabritz, PGA. Yeah, performance. what's his name so we can shout him out? Jason Clark. He's number one. All right. Jason, All right. Jason number let's one. go. Listen buddy. to your mom. What's yeah. wrong with you? Come on. <laughs> Listen to your mom. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. All you got right. it. Easy. 15 you know, teenage boy, don't listen to your mom. Was he <laughs> no matter how right she is, you know what I mean? I mean that's just how uh, <laughs> California? Is, is that California? Is she California? Yeah, Are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? Paradise. Paradise. What's that? Have him have him listen to the show live. Bring him Oh, in. that's not what I was thinking. Oh, okay. That's what I'm sure. thinking. <laughs> 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 that's what no, I was thinking. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if we're the type of content. That's why I said Paul Fabritz. I mean, you're. I remember being a 15 year old kid obsessed about my sport things. Yeah. Like that. I wouldn't. You'd listen, listen to a guy like I that. wouldn't listen to you guys. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah. like we're a bunch of fitness, health, like old dudes. Like we're not as exciting. But Paul Fabritz, uh, 100. percent I would Speak be for yourself. I don't know, man. Justin I, looks pretty. I would yeah. be watching his content. Corey Schlesinger would be a good follow up too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's 50% off. Then we have a bundle that's different. It's called the Starter Bundle that includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Uh, this episode is brought to you by some sponsors. The first one is Juve. This is red light therapy, like the kinds you read in studies before your home and affordable. Go check them out. Go to juve.com. That's J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get $50 off your first purchase. This episode is also brought to you by Zero Shoes. These are shoes designed to allow your foot to strengthen. They have a wide toe box so your toes aren't cramped together. They're great to lift weights in. They look great as well. And if you go through our link, you'll get 10% off. Go to zeroshoes.com forward slash coupon forward slash mind pump. Zero is spelled X-E-R-O. All right, here comes the show. Our next caller is Lee from California. What's up, man? What's How on, can we Lee? help you? Hey, what's happening? Hi, guys. How's it going? It's kind of surreal to be on. Thanks so much for taking my call. Thank you, man. Sure. You got it. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll read it off the email. I promised myself I wouldn't say that, but I did. So, um, you know, I find myself um, uh, going to you for fitness advice, really excellent fitness advice. And I've been on the fitness journey for quite a while as as a lot have been. And, you know, the more and more that I listen to you guys, and I haven't been a listener for, uh, you know, uh, too long, maybe the last, you know, six months to a year or so, uh, but certainly not uh, as much as most, but I find myself relating to you guys a lot when it comes to kids. And you guys always, um, you know, talk about that and, and just your, you know, a lot of your personal life, which I really enjoy listening to other than the fitness stuff. So, um, you know, to kind of sum up everything, and, um, you know, I'm listening to your episode on throwing away the scale, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, my day is severely affected when I weigh in and I don't see a loss. Even when I do see a good amount of loss, I think that I make an excuse and it's probably just water weight and it'll be next, it'll be back next week if not, I'm not careful, which stresses me out to keep things going. Uh, before weighing days, um, I'll eat less and I'll cut my food. I think Sal had talked about something like this, so you'd have a good number in the morning. Uh, my scale does calculate body fat and muscle mass, so I am more okay when I see the body fat go down, even if I'm staying with the same weight, but then also disappointed again when the muscle mass is the same or slightly higher, you know, just by fractions. My question regarding that is, you know, uh, I have a scale that calculates for body fat and muscle mass. Is using the muscle mass percentage a better indicator than weight alone? How accurate can that home scale be versus a body scan? Uh, or should I keep the scale away, even if it calculates for body fat or muscle mass? You definitely don't want to judge your results based off of what that scale says morning to morning. That's for sure. Because the slightest bit of difference in hydration will change the body fat reading on that. So if you had, you know, more water through the night or the night before or had, you know, 50 more grams of carbohydrates those little things will actually pick up different on that scale. And it can make the difference of you looking like you gained a half a pound of muscle or lost a half a pound of muscle. So day to day, I don't like it at all. Uh, oh, trends over weeks, like, okay, I checked my body fat two weeks, these next two weeks, I'm being super dialed and consistent. I'm doing all the things. All right. In two weeks, uh, did it go up or down and what direction is it going? Uh, and then even then I'm not hung up on the exact percentage. It's just, is it, is it moving in the right direction based off the variables that I've changed in my training and my diet? That's how I'm using that. I'm not allowing the number on it to necessarily dictate, uh, whether that's good or bad, especially day to day. I would definitely want at least two to four weeks in between to gauge if it's heading in the right direction. And that's what matters more than anything. Yeah. You know, based off of what you already said, about how you feel and react and respond and, and the behaviors that you have leading up to the weigh-in, I don't think you should weigh or track or measure. At all, really. Yeah, I think you should just not. Uh, it's causing you, it's actually reducing the quality of your life. And I think you would agree with me when, when, when yeah. I say that. So I think you should get yeah. rid of it completely. Now, you're not going to be able to get rid of it and then focus on nothing. So I'm going to move you in a different direction or, or at least change your focus to something that's better, not perfect, but better. I think you should focus on your performance. So measure your progress by your strength, your stamina, your stability, your mobility, uh, learning new movements. 
Start focusing on performance and stop weighing yourself. Stop weighing your food. Stop tracking everything so diligently because it's causing you, um, it's, it's, it's not healthy for you, or at least it's not causing you to become healthier in the context of quality of life. It's, what, it's reducing it. What do you say to your kids when they ask you what you're doing? Yeah. So that, you know, that kind of ties into my next, my next question. And, 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 you know, that's exactly why listening to you guys talk about the kids is so important. You know, I have two young ones, six-year-old and a two-year-old, two-year-old doesn't notice much, uh, the six-year-old noticing more. Um, uh, I, I used to count calories religiously. I lost about 60 pounds in the past this way with, a you know, once a very popular intense workout routine that I, I don't do anymore. Um, I, I now have two kids and my wife is very conscious about the way I eat and train in front of them. Um, she, she once banned me from using the scale to weigh my food and tracking because she doesn't want to send the wrong signals to the littles. Um, That's smart. so, you know, I wanted to throw it back to you. What I say when the kids noticing me using the scale is that, is I tell them, you know, that I am, I am, uh, you know, weighing this to make sure that, you know, daddy's getting enough nutrients that I'm, that I'm, uh, you know, uh, making myself as strong as I can be without answer. taking, you know, there's no talk of macros or calories or, or, or you know, I'll, I'll say protein, but I definitely won't say things like fat. Um, but you know, I really just say, I'm just doing this. So I, I make sure that I'm eating all the right things to, to stay healthy for you guys. Yeah. But I, I don't know if there's a subliminal thing where yeah. mm -hmm. that's a good my kids. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good answer. That's a good answer and response. I think, uh, you just have to have the self-awareness about yourself. Like, do you weigh, do you wear it on your face? Like it obviously looks like daddy is stressed it, out while he does it, or can you do it in a joyful manner and enjoy the process? And they ask you and you can respond that way. I mean, that's the only thing I would even, ask you. Even beyond that though, your words are so much less, uh, powerful than just your actions and what you show that you prioritize. So if you look in the mirror all the time, okay, if you're always checking yourself in the mirror, what your kid sees is the reflection is important. If you're weighing your food all the time, what the kid sees is we need to measure and weigh our food, that our food requires this kind of diligent uh, focus. So right. uh, it's probably not good for them to see you do that all the time, even though you're explaining it well um, with your right. words. You know, it's a six-year-old and a two-year-old. You know, they feel feelings more than they understand words. So right. uh, yeah, I think your wife is right, especially if she's noticing the same thing. So I, I don't, I don't, I think constantly weighing your food in front of the kids is probably sending the message that this is what you do with your food all the time. And, and you've heard us talk about this. That's not a great way to live. I mean, there's, there's times when that's important, but to be this way all the time, probably not. Yeah. You know, I find myself being lost. You know, I, I think for the last year, I didn't weigh anything. I didn't weigh myself. I didn't weigh my food. I was, I was mindful of things and, um, I don't, I don't weigh myself or I didn't weigh myself often. I'll right now I'll maybe go two weeks between weigh-ins, but you know, it's kind of one of those things where, um, you know, I look in the mirror, I feel strong. I feel like I look strong and then, and then, you know, I kind of get on the scale and it kind of tells me the opposite. Um, it doesn't so tell you the sometimes opposite. Sometimes they find that it's not telling you the opposite. You, you're stronger. You feel good. The scale's telling yeah. you nothing. It's just telling you weight. You right, think it's right. telling you the opposite because you have a bad relationship with it, which I understand completely. Right. Let me ask you this. Does the cycle look like this? Okay, I, I'm going to go for a long time. I'm not going to weigh my way. I'm not going to pay attention. Wow, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Oh, let me just check. Okay, let me check again. Oh, let me check again. And then it makes its way in as a regular routine again. Is that what it looks like? Yes. And since I wrote this email, I wasn't weighing and, and, um, and, and since then I am weighing again. And, you know, the problem with that is because now I'm seeing progress. Now I'm seeing the muscle mass go up and the body fat percentage go down, um, and, and the overall, you know, weight going down and, and, but for the more important quality of life thing, I think that's probably moving in the wrong direction. If I was honest with myself, you know, my wife, my wife, it sounds, it's going to sound really weird, but my wife made spaghetti and meat sauce last night and it wasn't planned, right? It wasn't planned in my meal preps and my calorie intake for the day. And I kind of like freaked out. I glitched out. I found myself uh, asking my wife what was in it so I could log it. Yeah. So oh, I, yeah. I couldn't even enjoy the, the plate of spaghetti. I was like, what's in it? How much is it? Right. How many servings do I think? So, yeah, Lee, Lee, this is not a, um, this is not a calorie, a weight 
thing at all. This is at this point, it's becoming like a control, and there's deeper yeah. things that we need to get get to the bottom of. Yeah. We definitely need to get rid of the scale. You need to not be doing that at all. You got to stay off that. I mean, I'm looking at you right now on this video, and I you look pretty damn healthy to me. No, uh, you and so I, you already are in a good place. And so if your weight went up or down five pounds north or south, you would still be healthy, bro. Yep. There's that, that's not you, you're you're already out to fluctuate listen, anyway a little bit. You got to li listen to the episodes we did with uh, Arthur Brooks. He's a, a Harvard professor. He's an expert on happiness, and he once gave me this analogy. He said you could take somebody who's on a scale of one to ten in terms of attractiveness. Let's say they're at a five, and then they spend all their time and energy getting from a five to a nine. It would barely register uh, in an improvement in quality of life. The improvement in quality of life from health and fitness. You know where that comes from? Being unhealthy to healthy. But to go from healthy to what the what is considered beautiful or aesthetic or what Model. would be on a magazine or whatever, there is no difference. In fact, what you tend to see is a negative correlation. You tend to see people go from healthy to shredded, ripped, looking what would be considered the ideal of, of beauty, and they have a drop in quality of life. There's a negative relationship there. So if you're saying and you're admitting here that your quality of life is going down, then you have an unhealthy attachment to the scale. And so you have to break that. You have to break up yeah, yeah. with this abusive relationship. Yeah. And I don't think there's a there's a there's going to be a normal dose for you. I think at this moment the dose is zero. Yeah. Just don't do it. Yeah, you you gotta yeah you gotta get rid of it completely. Get rid of the weighing. Get rid of the weighing yourself. Um, and and it sounds like you make pretty good choices. It sounds like you got a good partner too, which is mm -hmm. lean on her. Sounds like yeah. she sounds like she's <laughs> sounds like she's got a pretty good head on her on her on her shoulders. He's been telling me for a long time to throw all that stuff out yeah. and and uh you know i said you know once i get you know i got a barbell and a, and you know squat rack and all that stuff to, you know once you get that then then throw away the scale and this that and the other and and uh i did for a while you know and then i, I came back around to it what what program but, are you following you know, can i give you a strength program that you just focus on your strength for a while yeah you know i i'm in phase three of um of anabolic right now uh um with my with my calorie cut I, I'm kind of finding the volume um, too high, a little, a little high. But you know, I'm I'm only at 1,800 calories. So oh yeah. So, um, Here's what I'm going. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you Maps Power Lift if you don't yeah. have it, and then I want you to get strong. Yeah. Forget about the scale. Pure forget about focus. Just on strength. Get it's strong. How strong can you get? Take that obsession. Move it to strength. Yeah. That's going to serve you way better. All right. I appreciate that. And Thank you very and, much. And, and the way, because you're we're not weighing and we're not measuring food anymore, the way you decide how to eat is based off of strength and energy. That's right. Yep. So when you when you feel like you're low energy, you're low strength, feed that body. Okay. If you feel great, you maintain where you're at. That's how you decide more or less of whatever it is you're doing, but get rid of weighing the food and all that shit too. All right. All right, Lee. I want to hear back from you. I want to hear this, back dude. from you in a couple months. All right. 30, 60 days. Check back in with us. I appreciate it. All right, Lee. Thank you. Good luck, man. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good self awareness. I know. To say that yeah, quality he did at least know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, great, great, great self awareness. Yeah. That you know that what I was what he said to his kids is because let's be honest. Okay, there's there's going to be a lot of people listening right now. Uh, I, I want, and I don't want to freak them all out because they weigh and they have kids like, Oh shit, I'm, I'm fucking up. Like, no, that's not it. Like, and what he said, I think is, is really good. But to the point you were making and what I was searching for when I asked him, like, does, does, does he put that off his face? Of course like, he does. You could say the right thing, but your kids are so in tune to the, your mom yeah. and dad's energy. Yeah. And if your energy says I'm doing this cause I'm stressed out, but I say the right thing. Hey kids, yep. I'm doing this yeah. for, yeah. for my yeah. nutrition, but inside I'm going, Oh my well, God. His spaghetti story was the real revealing That's why as soon as, he, as, soon as yeah. he said that, I'm like, Oh my God, this, you got to yeah, go this so. way. So kids, kids are, they're actually more perceptive way more. changes in energy. That is their way mood. of communicating That's for it. most, for most they're of their hyper, life. They're hyper, hyper aware of it. If you're two and six years old, more of your life has been trying to read and feel energy in the room. Yeah, because you don't under, have language. Understanding yeah. language. Yeah. So if you put that energy, which is, by the way, too, I mean, this is just a testament to, to uh, that what happens to kids when 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 a couple is fighting and so that. Maybe, like, we're fine. Yeah, maybe, we're fine. maybe you don't scream at each other in front of your kids, but if you're constantly fighting and you have that energy toward each other, to think your kids don't pick up on that is crazy. Yeah, that's right. No different than when we're talking about nutrition. If you have a major issue with scale and weighing and you have all the, these fears and like, boy, they're going to, at the very up. least you call it out at the very mm -hmm. least you go, Oh, daddy has a, you know, I do this and it, I just, it doesn't make me feel good. And I'm trying to stop it. Like at least call it out. Cause they feel it. 
And when they feel it and it doesn't match the words, it's very confusing. Our next caller is Vanessa from New York. Hi, yeah! Vanessa. <laughs> How are you? Wow. Adam has oh all my the energy. God. How you doing? What a privilege. Oh my God, I'm great. I'm great. I've been looking forward to this all day. All right. Thank you so much. What you got for us? All right. I'm just going to read what I have, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. Um, ugh, I'm so excited. Okay. I'm 43. I have a four-year-old son. I was a CrossFitter in my 20s and early 30s. And since then, I have found an amazing gym that's not CrossFit that has transformed my body um, and life and it's called OG. Shout out to them. It's literally my sanctuary and release. And all of us muscle mommies, we feel like we'll be divorced by how much we go to the gym, but I know that you all can relate. I've never had any trouble meeting my protein intake. Um, in fact, I usually go over. I've put on plenty of muscle, but for someone who works out four to five days per week, I'm not seeing the results I used to be able to obtain so easily. I'm also hungrier and I find it hard to balance my eating. After your peptide episode months ago, I was on a mission to find a doctor that would supply this. I was desperate to try something to help me get over this hump. I have some underlying stuff, lupus, blood clots, etc., but nothing that has ever stopped my life and nothing that I really have ever shared, but it makes doctors not want to chance, take a chance on me. The doctor at this unmentioned place finally succumbed and started me on Samorlin. And I was on it for almost four months and had zero results, no weight loss, no muscle gain. Is that normal? I started to ask the other older women at my gym what they have been using, um, who are strikingly muscular. Some of them are on testosterone. There's so much out there. I'm looking for a small shortcut here as I age, and I'm still putting in the work. I just need more help than I used to. Is there any advice you could offer in this area? What do you think I could try to help my body change again? Okay, so did you get a full hormone panel so you could look at everything besides just the Samarilyn? I didn't. I I did. I'll admit, um, dabble with Transcend, your um, that company that you guys promote. Um, when I found out the cost of everything, I didn't. I didn't go forward with that. Um, that was my next step. Was to ask. Um, you know, when I go to my gynecologist next, I was going to see if I can go that route with her. Um, but I have not had like a full panel done you're of really, like you're hormones. really fit. Yeah, you look really good. I you think look you're, really I think fit. You're, I think it's just all in your head. Yeah, <laughs> you look amazing. No, I <laughs> listen. Uh, unless you Photoshop those pictures before you sent them to us. Yeah, you know, I, it's a, there's there's filter there's filter there's on there. Filter. Listen, <laughs> you got it. Um, I, I would can do a, stand up. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm, I I look probably thinner here. I'm thick. I am pretty thick bottom. You know, you look very healthy. Um, you look very healthy and very fit. Yeah, you look and, a, you, and you look strong. Yeah, you look like you're at a good body fat percent. So okay, so um, you could do a hormone panel. You don't have to do it with uh, a longevity, but just get a hormone panel. See where your testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, thyroid. See where those are at. If they're not off, then don't you don't need anything. If they're a little off, a little hormone therapy uh, at your age tends to produce some results. The Samarilyn that you went on raises IGF-1, but people think raising IGF-1 is going to produce these like miraculous effects. It takes like, uh, it's like a year before you really start to notice benefits of having higher IGF-1. I mean, even people taking growth hormone uh, will tell you that. And um, it's small. It's not like huge. Yeah, testosterone will give you much bigger effect, but even that's not a miracle. And some women don't feel great when they supplement with testosterone, especially if you're not outside of range. So I would do the hormone panel, look at it, and then- Look in the regular places: diet, exercise, sleep. Um, are you are you stronger in the gym? How's your performance? Um, I mean, I would say stronger in some aspects, like my back squat. If I told you what I back squatted, it wasn't anything uh, crazy. Um, I mean, this week he had the bands on the bars to do back squat, the stretch bands. So I I wasn't lifting that much. But I think my max is like 115 that I could back squat. Honestly, that's it. So I, I have some questions and, and some theories here. If you have a background of being an ex-CrossFit girl, typically it's hard for me to get my CrossFit girls and mommies like this to completely go to the other direction. So what does this, this training facility look like? Is it group training and is it like... <laughs> What's it look like? Tell me a little bit about this awesome place that we like so much. Uh, 
Who? Well, it goes a little against what you believe in, just a little. Uh, okay. okay. Only okay. a little I'm bit. The detective. Okay, let's hear it. Let's but, hear it. <laughs> um, so Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are strength days. Tuesday like day, Wednesday is a push day, Thursday is a pull day. Okay. And they are really geared. There's really minimal cardio, if any. Like sometimes there's just a little bit of running and sled pushing and stuff like that mixed in. But a lot of it is um, heavy weight, slow, um, you know, see either six to eight rep, eight to 12 rep, um, heavy weight lifting. And you're resting in between? Mondays, what do the rest periods look like when they do that? Um, well, this week I didn't have a partner, so I got to really rest. Um, but sometimes when you have a partner, you feel a little bit of pressure to keep, moving. keep it moving, you know, not wait more than 30 seconds. But when I was by myself this week, um, early morning, um, I rested for like over a minute um, before my next set, like when I felt good to, to go again. Vanessa, I think we can solve this for you. Yeah, it's your yes, workout. It's your workout. workout. I know you don't want to hear that because you like the community and you like the class and it was probably better for you than CrossFit was. But you got the physique, man. You've got the body to build muscle, to lean out, to do all the things that you want to do. Um, and by the way, you if I was yeah. training you, you'd absolutely be squatting more than you're squatting too because I can see you are, you are strong, you have muscle. But I mean, when you train and you have short rest period, even if uh, the weight is heavy relative to the things that we're doing, if you do these short rest periods, you're not getting the same benefits as if I had you sit down and rest for three minutes and then I added Competing another 10 signals. another ten minutes to the, or another 10 pounds of bar and then I let you rest again for three minutes. And then we had another, and it's such a yeah. different way of training. And then I know you're saying that it's mostly strength training with a little bit of sled pushing and a little bit of cardio mixed in, but this is what turns it into more like circuit training than it is like pure, true strength training. And then you're, um, you're probably going to tell me the other two days is more cardio focus is where I'm, where I'm guessing is, is going here. So, yeah. okay. I mean, if you would just follow a MAPS anabolic protocol or muscle mommy, by the way, we wrote a program for you. Okay. You use, uh, if you follow the program as it's laid out, as it's laid out, meaning following it to a T, meaning not doing anything, Don't add ad anything, nothing additional to it and resting as long as you're supposed to rest, I swear to God, you're going to see a difference. Yeah. You'll notice a difference. That's the good news is like you can still move the needle and, and get like yes. substantial results if you just change the format. And, and I, well, I want it because I know there's people that are they're screaming right now because this is always offensive to everybody for some reason. But I'm not attacking. There, it's not that there's something wrong with prone. It's just wrong for you and where you're at and what you're trying to accomplish. Your body is so adapted <clears throat> to that CrossFit style of training. Yeah. You've already reaped most of the benefits from that style of training that you're going to get. It's We need to move as far away from that as we can to send a signal to your body that is going to change the way you want it to change. You got to literally or, change to or, change. <laughs> or this, Vanessa, because here, this is also okay. When I have a client like you, I say this to you. I remind them, you look awesome. You're in great shape. You love this class. Let's keep doing it, but just if accept, accept you're not going to keep making these changes that you want for That's your right. seat. I'm okay with either one as your coach. Like I do, I would never tell somebody who loves this class is happy with where they're at physique wise and, and just want and say, you're doing something healthy for you. It's not bad. But if you came to me and you hired me and you said, I want to make change Adam. I want to drop a couple more percent body fat, or I want to get a little bit stronger. If yes. you came to me with wanting yes. this, then I say to you, we're doing the wrong things. That's what I say to you. Yeah. But it, yes. it doesn't mean that what you're doing is not healthy and isn't good. It is, and that's yeah. why it's you just, look great. It's just not ideal good. for your goals. Yeah. If look, if you if you like the class, you like the social component, and you're okay with it, they keep going. But if you're like, no, I really want to see these results, you're going to have to train differently for sure. Well, yeah, for sure. No, my husband, um, who goes to a regular gym, will say the same thing. I just, I think I'm intimidated. I haven't stepped foot in a regular gym in I don't even know more than ten years. Hmm. So oh. I, I don't even know what the machines do at this point. You don't need any machines. You, anyway. machine. no, you know how to yeah. squat, deadlift, press. Exactly. We're, we're going to send you muscle mommy so you have it. Follow I, it. I hope to God you you open it and you follow yeah, it. Yeah, it's your we're format. Gonna, we're going to send okay. it to you. There. Okay. But okay. I'm, I'm telling you right now, that's the answer. Yeah. The answer is, and it's literally as simple as, and in the hardest part, don't you dare do anything else in addition to it. Follow it the way it's laid out. Follow it to a T. Don't add anything extra. Do that. 
and 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 try and get stronger. Okay, and watch what happens. Yeah. Yes. Watch what happens. And you feel like magic. And I've been saying this advice a lot lately, and I just want to I want to repeat this to you because this will be a challenge. In the program, there's going to be times where it says, you know, do five reps of back squats or do 10 reps, whatever it is. I care more that you add more weight to the bar than I care if you get to the reps. So if it's on a okay. phase where it says do five reps and you're like, oh, I can do, I can do that probably easily a hundred pounds. So you put hundred pounds. I'm gonna go, no, 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 no. I want you to put more than you think. And if you only get to three reps, I'd rather that than you choose a weight that you get to five. So keep that in mind as you go through the program. That's the mindset I want you to have as you go through this. And if you follow this the way it's laid out, you hit your protein intake, which sounds like you do easily, you're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna change your physique, I promise you. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I will. I will do it. Well, yep. All right. I want, we're you, sending I want you to circle back and check with me. Okay. Because I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I will. Okay. All right. Yeah. For sure. All right. Thank Thanks you, guys. Thank you for the muscle right. mommies. I appreciate it. All right. All right, Vanessa. Yeah, you got Thank this. You. Nice to meet you guys. Yes. Nice to meet Bye. you. She knew right away when you asked her. Bro, bro, she I knew it right away. I'm like, like, oh no, he's on to me. And here, I, here's like, a, we, we, we do strength training. Yeah, you, know, you use weights. Uh, yes. <laughs> I knew it, dude. I, I smelt Orange Theory F45 yeah. all over her. Yeah. So here, here's the thing, though, and I, and <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to repeat this. So, so because I know everybody, who, if you're if you're taking one of those, you get def defensive right away. It's like, listen. If you're happy with where your physique is at and you don't want to make change and you love the class, you know what? I would never change that. Right. I would tell you, hell yes, keep doing it. Because you know why? It is healthy for her. Yeah. She is got muscle. She does look good. You don't need, but if you come to me as the professional and say, Adam, I want to do, I want to change my physique. I want more body fat percentage wise. I want more, more muscle. muscle then I'm going to tell you it's the wrong fucking thing from you. And I don't know why that is so hard for people to wrap people their brain want and get so defensive yeah. with that, like I'm attacking yeah. their workout routine. They if want like, to move the needle in their comfort zone. Yeah. It's, like it's not going to work like yeah, that. Yeah, you, no. you got. we have to move away from that. And and I knew it because you come from a CrossFit background. It's always really difficult to take somebody to go the yeah. other extreme. Yeah, Rarely does it happen. Normally it's like- She took a couple little steps. Yes. And and, <laughs> and by the way, did you hear her? She saw, she saw a world of a difference. Yeah, just yeah. needs to keep going just that direction. That, it's like a scale. Yeah. yeah you just like, got to keep moving that direction. You got to keep going. And you'll, and you'll see even more results, I promise. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher. Body